Welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. I'm at one of my favorite stores, the Lumberyard, picking up some material for a shabby chic closet project. Stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. One thing to be aware of when you're in a lumber yard is the dimensions of the wood. I've got a 2x4 here in white pine and it's not 1.5 by 3.5 like you think in a 2x4. It's 3.5 by 1 and 3 quarters. So if you're looking for something smaller, the next step down is an inch and a quarter, sometimes labeled as 5 quarter. So just have someone in the lumber yard help you out and bring along your tape measure so you know exactly what you're getting. Let's head in the workshop and start making some sawdust. I've milled up all my lumber. I bought inch and three quarter and I had to get it down to an inch and a half. I've also laminated some boards because I need some wider boards for the base of the doors. So these shabby chic closet doors are going to have some embellishments on them that elevate the style of the door. Let me show you the rough sketch that I'm using for this build. So we've got two doors here, they'll be hinged at the sides. And here this is just a plain door to give you an idea of the structure. So it's a three inch border all the way around with uh, eight and a quarter at the bottom. And then on this side here, I've just roughly sketched in some of the embellishments. They're really gonna dress up this door and give it that shabby chic look. The way I'm building these doors is putting a dado in each of the styles. So dadoing in each side, putting the panels in, putting the rails in, that's how these doors are gonna be held together. I'm gonna show you that step by step. Uh, if you haven't noticed yet and you're a regular viewer, you'll see the tool cabinets up on the wall. There's a lot of uh, organizing that needs to happen in here, but uh, I'm really happy to have this finally up on the wall to start, uh, start using and organizing my tools. So I've got my stock now with the dado in it, here and here. I've laid this out, these are the styles of the door, the upright pieces. And what I have to do now is cut these tenons here to fit in the dados. So this board's gonna fit between these two with a tenon in here, and the same thing on this side. I decided to put the plywood in first, and that would just give me some accurate measurements here, so I can measure the distance here, and the measure in the dado here. So this gives you an idea of how the door is starting to shape up. I need to take off three quarters of an inch here and leave a tenon. So I'm cutting this part out here with this dado stack by running it across this way. Now I need three quarters of an inch here and I, my dado stack I've set up here is a little bit wider. And what that means is I need to get this fence right up to that dado stack. So I'm putting a sacrificial fence here so I can cut into the wood here and get this lined up exactly where I need it. There are a couple different ways that I can use to cut down wide stock, but the fastest way for me is I've got a 12 inch cut on my miter saw, is to make one cut here, flip it over, line it up, and then cut it again.
While the glue is drying, I've got a question for you. We've recently had some comments from Russia and Chile, and I'm really curious about where our viewers are from. So if you could let us know, put it in the comments below, and if you're really tech savvy, see if you can figure out how to put a flag in there as well. I've got the doors all glued up now, and I need to put a bevel on the doors. When closet doors open the way the hinges are, they're actually a little bit longer when they're partway through that arc. So what I need to do is put a bevel on there so that their doors are slightly shorter at the back. So this is the front of the door here, this is the back. I need a bit of an angle this way. So it's just a matter of marking it with a pencil and then using a hand plane. I mark in about a half inch from that front edge. This is the edge I don't want to plane down. Then I grab the hand plane and what I want to do is put it on a slight bevel. So a little bit of an angle tilting up from this end. The first pass pulls off just a small curl. That's just taking off the tip here. The second pass is a wider shaving. The third pass will be even wider. So what I'm doing is progressively working to that half inch line. Wider. And then as I get closer, what I'll do is put my knuckle here and hang onto the plane so it doesn't come over the front edge here. That just gives me some insurance. I'm not going to touch that front edge. And that should be good. I'll just check it with the square. Yep, looks good. The first piece of detail is this trim that goes along the inside. It takes it from a shaker look more like a traditional door look. And then the second step is adding in some decorative moldings. The first step is to cut a 45 degree miter with a quality miter saw. And then you can put the trim in place and mark it for distance. So here I've got it marked at a 45, I need to mark the other end. And I'll show you how I do that because some people find this tricky. So let me put it on the other end here. So this is touching the top of the inside of the frame. And then what I do is I mark a straight line across where the end of the trim needs to be. And then I put a mark here reminding me the angle I need to cut. This is the distance I need at the very end of that point. So there's a good fit. If it's a little bit too long and that's what you want to start with, start long and work your way shorter. Um, what you can do is just with the saw blade stopped, touch the trim on the saw blade and then run the saw. That takes off just a little tiny bit and work your way until you get a nice fit. The next step for the shabby chic detail is adding these corner decorative pieces. And you can see here as I put this on, it sort of looks like it was added on as an afterthought. So what I'm going to do is actually cut away a portion of the trim and I mark it here and here. So I cut away that trim and it becomes integrated. I've got some nice straight lines here and here, but I still have an area at the end to let this in. The only way to deal with that is to cut it by hand. So I'm going to pull out my carving knife. So what I need to do is just cut this back a little bit, work my way back to that line, and then once I'm there, I just come back this way gently and clear out the chips. So what I want to do is make sure I don't have a lip 
anywhere up here. So now I can put it in place, make sure it fits. Yep, nice snug fit. The glue up is fairly straightforward. It's just a matter of applying enough glue so that you can spread it around and not get enough so you get squeezed out at the top. So I use an artist brush when I spread glue. Not your fingers because they have oils in them and they can contaminate the glue and weaken the glue. So it's just a matter of spreading it along, making sure you got an even coat, and that way you're maximizing that glue surface. So glue on the back, glue on the side, and I just spread that in a direction that allows it to get to the back. Stay away from the front, and that will minimize the squeeze it up front. Same thing on the bottom, and then work on the sides, because the sides I can bend into place where I need to. Okay, so those four pieces are in place. Now it's just a matter of putting these corner decorative elements in. And it's fairly straightforward, just applying glue across the design, and then spreading out the glue. You don't want too much glue in here because again, you don't want a ton of squeeze out. A tiny bit's okay, but you don't want to get carried away with that glue. And you might notice that I've numbered these. The reason I numbered them was because I wanted to make sure that if I fit one in a corner and cut it, that I didn't swap it with another one because it might be a different size. When finishing bare wood, you always need to prime the wood. And I'm doing this in two different ways. The first part here is working with a really thick primer to go over all of the curved parts. Making sure these carving elements look like they're part of the door is really important. I don't want them to look like they've just been added on. The last thing before the rest of the primer goes on are these escutcheon plates here. There are knobs that are going on top of these. And what I want to do is center them in the styles and center them in the rails. So I'll mark those up, fill these with epoxy, and then stick them on. I sand everything down with a random orbital sander and a shop vac. And then it's time to ease the corners. I ease the corners here using sandpaper. And I do that by hand, just giving it a nice feel, because part of the finish is not just how it looks, but also how it feels. And here's a tip for you. Don't use the sanding pads from your random orbital sander. These are expensive. Buy sandpaper, it's much less expensive. All you need to do is take a quarter sheet, fold it in half, and then you've got a really great way to sand down and ease the rounded edges of these corners. These doors are now ready for primer. And this is a really fun part where you get to see the doors transform into their final form. The only thing I don't like are these escutcheon plates that I put on here. These were provided by the customer and it's a rubbery material. And putting on the epoxy and trying to get them sit level was a real challenge. I wouldn't recommend using something like this in the future. Uh, use something that's wood or a solid composite. So I'm going to be using an HVLP sprayer to put the primer and the paint on. Um, this allows me to get a furniture quality finish on these doors. If you don't have a sprayer, uh, you can use a paintbrush and a roller. Just make sure you're using a roller with a fine nap so you won't leave a texture. And use a paint that settles very well to give a smooth finish and won't have a textured finish to it. Benjamin Moore Advance is one of my favorite products for that. So I'm going to tarp off the shop here. I don't have a separate finishing space. It's going to take me a few minutes to do that. I'll set up the doors and then you get to see 
this fun machine in action. I sprayed on three coats of primer and this allowed me to get enough thickness of material that when I sand it, I'm not going through the finish. Then I applied five coats of paint and it's five coats because spraying puts it on very thin. It's very different than rolling it on or brushing it on. But once you spray it on and it's not dry yet, you can see how shiny the surface is and how smooth that's eventually going to dry out. With these doors painted, you can see the shabby chic look coming to life. The last step is to put on the hardware. So here I am at the customer's home. I've got the doors to mortise in on the hinges that are here already, and then put the door hardware on, and then we'll let the customer take a look. I prop up the door to the right height, and then just mark the areas here and here for the top and bottom of the hinge. That way I've got my marks for mortising, but I'm not marking up the paint. First thing I do here is line up the hinge with the marks that I made on the door on the tape here and then use a knife to score the wood. <coughs> then I take my chisel, line it up in that knife line. Score it on either end. And then very carefully just take out a tip here. I can take that tape off now. I'll do the same thing here, just go a little bit deeper. So that's the starting point. So I need now to make this flat through here. And if the grain's running this way, downhill, as I chisel this out, it's gonna to wanna to go deeper and deeper. So I wanna find out which way the grain's going because I want to avoid that. So let's see. I think it's going this way. Yeah, you see how this comes uphill as I'm hitting it? That's what I'm looking for, because then I can control the depth. try. No, it's shallow and that's fine. It's better to have it too shallow than too deep. So it's just a matter of going over it again and getting it the right depth. This is a self-centering bit. You get the hole in the middle every time.
Oh wow. Oh my gosh. I love it. Scott, you did a great job. The escutcheons, everything looks beautiful. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Well, as you can tell, we've got a pretty happy customer. We're starting to get comments from around the world on our videos. So if you can leave in the comment below where you're from, and if you're really tech savvy, a flag of your country, it'd be great to see the various viewers we've got and what country you're from. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click over here and click on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop. <laughs>